Robbie, let's just start with what I think was shocking news for a lot of people. We had seen it maybe wasn't going as well as it could have been going at yep. Chelsea, but to the point of a firing... Did that shock you? Yeah, it shocked me. I think it shocked most people in football, given what he's done at the football club. We showed there the achievements that he's had. He almost won two domestic cups last year, lost out on penalties. And, yeah, they haven't started very well. They haven't been playing very well. But, I mean, he has been involved in trying to bring new players in. Now, when you go through that process and you bring a lot of new players, it's an exciting-looking potential team. The Obama Yang thing, of course, we know that Tuchel's worked before with him and there's a great relationship. So, to then find out, like, four, five, six days later that he was fired, it's like, well, well wait, well, wait, no, 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 he's now going to get a chance to coach the team that you've jointly put together. Mm. Now, I get... I guess there's a difference of opinion and shared vision, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But still, doesn't, he, doesn't Todd Bowley realise this guy's kind of an experienced, successful manager. Let him have a period of time with this team. Let's see what you can do. Now, if things don't improve a lot, I get it. So I just think, wow, OK, like a big change. Uh, you're getting rid of a, a very, very good, experienced manager. I think... I think also the fact we've got to take into account Petr Cech, he's gone, the director of football, Tom Bowley, from, from all intents and purposes, he's been playing that sporting director role. And sporting directors and managers, they clash all the time. We see that at football clubs. But all of a sudden, you've got someone that's a co-owner of the club now becoming as well, the sporting director in this interim period. And I just think there was probably so many coming together between the two of them that it was just like enough was enough. And, you know, from, from Todd Bowley's side of things, he's probably looking and thinking, I want to bring my own man in. And as you quite rightly said, with Tuchel, he's probably looked and thought, I've got a wonderful managerial CV. I've got a great reputation. He's not going to be short of opportunities. But like you say, they spent all of this money... Mm -hmm. And then the manager goes. So anything they've been working on, anything where they've been looking at saying, right, I want this player and I want that player because he fits my system, all of that goes out of the window because you then bring a new manager in. Mm. Isn't this just the culture of Chelsea? I know a new man <laughs> leading the charge here, a new owner. But long, I mean, this is what we've seen from Chelsea for a long time. We have, Ahmed, but it doesn't mean it has to continue that way. And maybe it's not. You know, as we transition into Graham Potter with a five-year contract and a, a conversation between the two that is all about longer-term plan, I think I like it. I like that, you know, and, and, but, but I, I know what you mean with the, the Chelsea team, but it doesn't mean it has to continue. Abramovich had a way of doing things and, to yeah. be fair, was successful. Now, Todd Bowley, I feel, is going to try for a longer vision with a different man, but again, let's see. The proof's in the pudding. When this guy starts getting bad results, and maybe those fans, there's a few boos, by the way, at the end of the game at uh, Stamford Bridge with his first game, if they start a little bit of unrest, what's he going to do then? That's when the pressure will be do, on. Do you think that the fans will be accepting of this new direction that Chelsea are going in? Because that's, that's going to have to stand the test of time as well. Well, yeah, I mean, I, it, it will be about instant results. <laughs> Back to the culture, mm. they're, they're used to change and things happening very quickly. Now, whether the Chelsea fans are going to be OK with not a big name done, and we talked about that's it, like often a, you know, a legendary player in Lampard, mm. as you said earlier on, or you know, some other big names, he isn't a big name with a big amount of success on his CV. Are the Chelsea fans going to be patient in what I believe is going to be an exciting project under Graham Potter. I think, you know, just talking about Graham Potter as well, I think the biggest problem he's going to have is that, as we've said, Frank Lampard, he's gone in there. He was a Chelsea legend, instant respect. You know you get respect as a manager when you go into a club from one of two things, what you did as a footballer, if you were previously a player, or the trophies that you've won as a manager. Now, from Graham Potter's uh, perspective, didn't have a glittering career. As a manager, done incredibly well at clubs, but this is another level. Let me add uh, one thing there, Danny. Also, as we know as players, not just those two things you said there, but also his first impressions with training. Training's got to be good. They've got to, the players have got a sense like, well, this is a smart guy and this is a smart tactical idea or I know he changed his tactics for this particular game, but that's kind of how he's going to have mm -hmm. to be. So I get that, what he's done and, and what he's like, like as a player, but also how he carries himself as a coach with the meetings, with the first training sessions, equally as important. I would guess that you think he's going to be able to do that because as long as I've been on this desk, you have been talking up Graham mm -hmm. Potter yeah. at Brighton. Yeah, I just think he's a, a, a thinker. He's a smart manager. I mean... The fourth tier of Swedish football, yeah. Danny, he started. He couldn't get... A whole university is where he started his career, if you like. So he has come from the very bottom. So he's got to be a smart guy. And we can talk about tactics all day long, Danny, but it does, sadly, come down to perception. And the squad, are they going to be backing him? Are the fans going to be all over him when the results aren't... aren't um, maybe going too great to start? That's what we've got to watch. And I also think it's getting the players on side. Because no disrespect to Brighton, no disrespect to the players that he signed there, for them to come and play in the Premier League for Brighton was the pinnacle. 
it was unbelievable where now he's going to manage players that have been at Barcelona, that have been at PSG, that are used to winning things. And that's going to be the biggest thing for me. I think he's a wonderful tactician, but I also think he's an incredible man manager. And I think that he Retested. can get it right. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.